Still in recovery, much better this morning. <clears throat> much better. Which I'm really relieved about, you know. <coughs> Obviously not 100%, but doing better. Well, this last round of um, videos and the re interactions, or rather I should say actually, the comments from folks. That, thank you, people. This is just, this is what it's about, is just um, being real, being the self, and sharing. You know, uh, I know that this is regarded as like a show for um many people you know and uh in in a way it is but really it is it's just spending a little time with in my presence and that's what friendship is even when it's not directly in person so i'll go ahead and drop this down that's a little bit of music to uh kind of set the tone um i'm gonna ramble and then I'll get to some some music. So um, I really appreciate where I'm at in this world with people, and in particular the music world. Um, I decided last night to tweet and to post on Facebook that um, a thought that I was having, which is I'm finishing up my new album. The world doesn't need it, but I do. And that resonated with a lot of people, you know, that I would say such a thing and that I have that kind of attitude. I love who I hear from. Martin Archer, Discus Music, uh, left up. It is a good philosophy. It's real, you know. It's one I can live by. I heard from Ronnie Beck, former drummer from Tower of Power, you know, gave, told me, well, go on and go ahead then. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's going to hit Billboard or any of that shit. I'm doing it. Terrace Martin's dad piped in. The band Gong. That, this mean, you know, all these people mean a lot to me. It's, it's cool to drop the names, too. The band Gong. They retweeted my tweet. They, they've done that in the past. I love that I am considered a member of the uh, international gong community, as maybe some of you all are too. So that's just wonderful. You know, it's love. I appreciate it. And um, the way that I speak to you, even when I'm crabby, is a, my way of, of, of showing love. If you look at the comments on the last video, a someone from, I think, uh, with the German sounding name, suggested to me green tea and some other things and it's like I just said I already know see and if you see how the exchange went it was very friendly but there's a reason why I'm single is because um, there's the crabby side of me I'm a cancer and um, I um, I also know that somewhere along the line I was a, a, a late bloomer as far as social um, uh, understanding of the world and uh, so um, I've almost lost my train of thought <sighs> it'll just come back to me in a second oh yeah the whole idea of you know I I um, like to do things for myself I like to find out things for myself and um, I don't like advice well I here's something that I learned through my life, um, and especially working in mental health, advice is best when people want it. Um, I learned a couple of good lessons on this uh, about giving advice when it's not wanted, even if it's good advice. I learned to ask people, do you want my advice? Because in the mental health field, you, you end up working with a lot of people who are actually, they themselves are self-centered jerks. I want to help people, and if you examine the reason, it's because they want to make themselves feel better. This isn't necessarily the best motivation for trying to reach out to others. I'm really aware of that, and a little bit, um, so 
I learned to ask people, well, what, I ha would you care for some advice? And another thing that was really um, instructive was when I had, when I was told finally by someone, no, I don't want your advice. And how I responded inside, I learned a lot. I did, you know. It's like it's not about me, you know. If they want what I have to offer, then they'll they'll take it. But it ain't about me. And so often people say they want to help, but it's about them. It is. So last night I was able to sit up for a while. Still ended up going to bed before 10 o'clock. But I... Played two records, and this was one of them, Uriah Heep, The Magician's Birthday, with that lovely Roger Dean cover. These guys were um, high school favorites, and um, I got to see them twice live at this time. I saw this tour. Excuse me, excuse me. They are, were just fantastic live. And I gotta say this, so don't take it wrong. This is back in the days when it was you couldn't be gay and out, and yet it was so obvious to me at 14 years old that David Byron is gay as the day is long, and that's not a bad thing, but it's just like it's so obvious, and it just it was always to me kind of interesting how these so supposedly really macho male bands. Um, Come to find out that many of the people are gay, you know. Judas Priest is a very a perfect example. And it's like, and my comment is, well, why do we why are we always trying to be in denial of what we are? You know? That spectrum of sexuality is part of being human. Let it flow, I say, let it flow. Oh my God. The insanity that's going on right now with censorship and crazy, I'll say it. Crazy entitled white people trying to whitewash the world. For their own selfish little ways and how it's how it's happening pathetic pathetic huh you think that's good only one group gets the best of the world which is what's been going on forever and that's why we're in this colossal mess that we are with uh, I bring it up all the time because it's like it's so obvious this colossal mess with war and climate and political division because the haves want to have it their way and keep it their way. And they'll dest they'll destroy us to keep it that way. Haven't you noticed? Oh, there we go. Oh, well, we're getting there. The other thing about being sick is how food just don't taste right. It took me until last night to get a, a, a meal into my body because it just... Okay. Like I said, this is me sharing my life. This is not a show. So I'll talk about whatever I want, right? So last night, I also, because um, I like looking for information, I found a thread on Jandek, the guy from Houston who's a bit of an enigma. <coughs> Years ago, someone sent me, sent me this Jandek album. They sent me another one. I sold it. I should have kept it. I get it. I get it. I get what Jandek is about. I do. <clears throat> Hearing him talk and the reticence of, on his part to talk about things completely unrelated to him making these records spoke volumes to me. Then when he pointed out what he, what he thought was his most successful recording, I, I end up having it. I knew you would leave is on here. Six and Six by Jandek. He does tune the guitar to those overtones and tones that he wants to hear. And he plays them like a harp. This music is dour and like looking at a fading photograph. There's a haunting sadness to almost everything. But I said, Bye. I'll be damned. I'm getting this. I understand why this man makes this music the way he does. It's what led me to make the comment that I did that I'm, I'm finishing up my new album. The world doesn't need it. 
I do. So that's uh, the latest. Um, yesterday was my um, great nephew's birthday. Happy birthday, twins, because I know that they watch. Sequoia Flame, an old timer in the VC. I heard from you yesterday, Dave. Really good to hear from you. Yeah, it's been 10 years now, isn't it? Amazing. When we started, you, you and your wife were experiencing your first pregnancy, and now you got kids, big kids. Another person who I, I can't recall the name now, but he, I remember him. He made, made a comment. He's been gone. You know, he's one of those people that, you know, people just disappear. They're here, and then they're gone. And he's been gone for almost 10 years. It was good to hear from him. We did used to, uh, I remember that we exchanged some records at least once, maybe twice. So yeah, so I'm on the mend. And I will be so glad when this is completely out of my system. Isn't it refreshing that I'm not here trying to sell you some shit all the time? Or telling you what to do, subscribe and all that shit. I fucking hate that. So I'm just not going to do it. Okay, so I'm looking at these records and I'm thinking... Let me kind of gear up and see what a pull may bring today. The other thing i got to explain is that... There's a huge part of my collection that I can't pull from like this because A through the first part of D is out in the other room. So we never get to the Amandoles and the, the cans and the coal trains. All that's all out there. I may do it just for fun. Set up the uh, laptop in the kitchen and do a pull in the kitchen. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, get well, folks. I'm hearing from several of, you, several of you, L, other folks who have gotten sick. Take care and get well. Again, it's, you know, the season and so many other things. That's, that's, let's go back here and see what I can get pre-Gabriel. Did I, did I get it? Did I get it? Yeah. Edgar Freuze, or however you say his name. Please, I don't need you to explain the, pronou the pronunciation. Uh, you, you know, you can come up with something better if that's all you're going to do is comment that. It's okay if I don't say the name right, okay? I'm not going to apologize for being like this. You know, this is how I am. It's like, you know, and some people can take it personally. <laughs> oh, fuck that shit. Okay. Aqua. I believe this was his first solo album. This is my second copy of it. I bought it when it first came out. I don't often play this. But I love it. And I especially love the early Tangerine Dream. Zeit. Yes, this is my second copy. I had the original with the white label with the uh, two virgins. So um, I recently re engaged with um, Tangerine Dream, the latest version, and I. Uh, it's flowing. It's not, it's nothing compared to where it started. Excuse me, but it's it's good it's good music, and it serves a purpose. This music serves a purpose. We need Tangerine Dream music. We do. Okay. So we've been trying to get a a, 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 a get together with the RAF band for a number of reasons that we were going to try to do it tonight, and it's not. I just got the message; it's not going to happen tonight. Which is fine because I need I need more days to um, to heal up. We were above the edge of Freuza. Let's go back here. See what is lurking back here. What is that?
group therapy. 37 minutes of group therapy. Okay. This is going back to the late 60s, early 70s. This is in psychedelia. Um, there's almost an R&B element to this band. Um, they do River Deep Mountain High on here. This is one that I saw used cheap enough to get with wanting to just really kind of grab a lot of um, records from my past that I used to see that I was interested in. Just one second. I had turned the heat up, but I'm going to turn it back down. <coughs> Still going through that um, hot, cold flashes. While I was out there, I grabbed from a bunch of my singles are in the hallway. And this was laying on top of the boxes. Undertones, Teenage Kicks. Yeah, John Peel said this is one of his favorite songs. And um, I like it when people refer to John Peel and me in the same breath. I like that. Yeah, that's a big compliment. I am that kind of listener. I want to hear everything, if I could. And um, this is a reissue. It's not an original, but it's still a numbered one. It's nice. And it's a great song. With that in mind, I have been smitten by the song Angelica by Wet Leg. That song, not the whole album. That's That song stands out. I've listened to the Wet Leg album, and they're blowing up as far as sales. I'm happy for them. But that song, Angelica, going to the party, that's a great song. Listen to the structure of it. And that's, the words are cool. That ain't what it's about for me. The structure and the way it moves. It's a great pop song. I love it. Wet Leg, seriously. Okay. Down here, I'm trying to kind of sort of. Right now, I'm trying to cheat and see. Do I pull the Sakamoto if I pull from this part here? No, okay, because everything is shifted. See? Things aren't where they were. This is kind of cool for me. This is an album, it's a reissue, but this is one from the early progressive 70s that I really lusted after. It was originally on RCA Neon, and I got turned on to that label through getting some free promos from a radio station as a teenager. And uh, Chris McGregor's Brotherhood of Breath and Dando Shaft. I still have the Dando Shaft. And I just love the uh, neon um, graphic for the label. So consequently, um, I was intrigued by anything on the label, but you didn't see them. So it took me until years later to get this Akarma reissue. I don't have an attitude about Akarma. Man, there's some snooty collectors who have some snooty, unnecessary attitudes about different labels. I'm not, I'm not participating. There's an aspect of Vandergraaff generator sound to this album. This is very good and it's very progressive and I love that cover. Of course, the, the color has something to do with it, orange, but the image is, time is. I have their first album too, raw material. This is good music, people. And it's interesting. It's, this is interesting. Because I do know that uh, some of you watching this, if, you, if I don't show it to you, you probably never know about it. I enjoy that. That's why I do things my way rather than being a request machine. It reminds me of a story re about requests that I'll share. And then I'll do another pull. Sorry. So again, over the years, people will say, oh, you, you, you should be a DJ. Well, I was. I was a DJ. I was, I've been a DJ several times. I've been a DJ twice on stations here in Omaha, legit. Um, and both of them were um, shows where they were experimenting with alternative shows and I was contacted, you know, wisely by one station to help them get it going. 
And then there was a pirate radio station here in town. I can't, can't remember the, the call letters, but I had a couple shows on that. And um, I try. I had a show called Sunday Night Spectrum where I played whatever I wanted, but I also uh, took requests, you know, because I'm the DJ. I remember this one Sunday night where, and I forget. I remember the record. Some jerk called in requesting a a particular mix of the Screaming Blue Messiah's song was it I want to be a Flintstone and the station had it but I couldn't find it I couldn't find the damn copy you know so um, when it came time to play the request I even said it beforehand sorry but I cannot find that mix I don't know what where the record went but here's the song that person called back and proceeded to cuss me out on the phone. Now, this is a pirate station, and that's what I'm knowing. It's like, this ain't legal, and so only the people listening hear this. So, oh, hell, I'm not taking this. So you know what I did? I stopped the record, hung the phone up, got back on the air, and said, hey, motherfucker, you call back right now and apologize to me. This is some bullshit. Fuck this. I told you I couldn't find it, and you call in and act like an asshole. I'm not playing another note to your ass calls back and apologizes, and I followed through. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? That's where I'm at. That's how I'm living. Keep it real. He called back. He apologized. So, the other thing is, um, I know from experience, I'm not a people pleaser. I worked through that. Being a people pleaser is just the most ungratifying role to play because people just use you and just wear you out and they'll kill you literally because you are willing to help and willing to please. So I'm not a people pleaser. Not at all. I used to be. And that's, as a result, I'm more helpful. That's the thing I found. So I, you know, it's like I hear that you people saying, besides the records, that you're catching my flavor or what I'm about. I learned again the hard way through working in psych and in children's homes and at runaway centers that the best way to help is sometimes to not help and to get out of the way and to just be available to people as they find their way or struggle through whatever. People help themselves, ultimately. They do. Okay. Let's go up, up here. Don't look. Don't look, Derek. I'm, I'm tempted to look. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Great cover. So, so album. Many will disagree. I think this album is just okay. Sweet Smoke, Just a Poke. A little jammy. A little spacey. It's pretty good. The cover's better than the album. But it's a keeper. And I love that cover. With the chillum. Just a poke. Just a poke. Down here where I can hardly reach. Uh, I'm in the section that used to be Z. What is it now? Three for all. What W's? Phil Woods, Tommy Flanagan, Red Mitchell. Phil Woods is a dynamite uh, saxist, if you um, don't know. Um, jazzer. Top player. Top player. I haven't played this in a long time. Looking at the tracks here... Um, Excuse me. It's another good one to pull for play. I like jazz. I love jazz. But I relate. And if you ask me how do I um, identify myself, I'm a more of a rocker. I'm a rocker. Rock and roll is what, um, well, you know, Chuck Berry and Little Richard were the beginning of it all for me, Everly Brothers. So I love jazz, but I'm not a jazz head. And... I'm very um, grateful for the experience that I've had growing up with my dad uh, and his jazz friends. 
some people still have a hard time believing this. The people I've been around doesn't matter, you know. You know, there's a lot of people like me who, in their lives, encounter and are around people because of circumstances that are kind of surreal. It's surreal that here in Omaha, that th th those caliber of musicians were coming through here and coming to my house, jamming and eating food and hanging out and buying drugs. Yeah, everyone from, um, like I've said it, you know, the big one, John Coltrane, uh, Miles Davis, okay, right there, both of them actually been to my house. So we'll just stop right there on that. This has got a fat spine. What is this? Oh. <laughs> well, you guys know that Haromi Hosono is one of my top dogs. Top dog. Omni sight seeing. I was so glad when this finally came out on vinyl. I bought it when it first came out on CD. Just love the way that he mixes things up and his sense of rhythm. You know. Um, See, that's the other thing that I, I dug about going over to Japan. People told me that Japan, Japanese were going to be real racist, and I, did, I found that not to be true at, at all. I found the opposite. I found a lot of people really cozying up to me and trying to show me how black they are. Japanese are like blacks. We're cool, you know. I th it amused me. But there's a lot of truth to it. But the thing about it is it's not just the Japanese. See, we're all made of the same thing. And back in the 60s, before on American Bandstand, before white kids got good rhythm and dance that funky way, it just took time for them to absorb the uh, culture and influences and in, in everybody's got soul is what I'm saying. Oh, some of us got a whole lot of soul. This album is just fantastic. The, oh, you know. He does Duke Ellington's Caravan, but Laugh Gas. And Coriander and Pleocene, side two on this is just kind of like, uh, to me, uh, a perfect album side. And look at those graphics. Look at that cover. It's just fantastic. Hosono is the man. Wow, look at how long I've been going already. 27 minutes. See, uh, don't pay attention. I'll do one more because the longer it is, the longer it takes to upload. And... Um, I like to check back. I actually um, I monitor my videos to uh, see how much sense I made. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, up, up high, up high, up high. I, don't, I didn't look, I didn't look. What is it? Fat. Hit love stuff like this. It's just kind of obscure and the sounds that they're making are left of center. This is exactly what this is. It's like um, they have a sound all their own. I have another CD by them. It's kind of a rubbery thing that plays with time. It's instrumental. I don't recognize these names um, except some of the people behind the scenes here Jim Salter and Donald Dietrich again this is the other part that's fun about what I've been doing here is it's like I'm basically giving myself a playlist to listen to today if I want to and it's a playlist that I would not come up with otherwise if I wasn't doing it like this so this is this is why it's fun. <sighs> okay. Body is saying, calm down, rest. I'll see you.